All right, everybody, welcome back. Sam's Army, episode 2.198. We got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to start with headlines. The Super Duper League is back, and Jesse Marsh is still in the headlines. Weekly What If, uh, club soccer stock market question. Premier League, we got to talk about refing. And, uh, of course, City Arsenal coming up this week. Preview. Rest of the world, we got Champions League is back this week. Time to get excited. And finally, stoppage time with Ivan Tony's Best Bets and everyone's favorite segment, Goas. And then after that, stay tuned for a great chat with San Antonio FC goalkeeper and uh, USL Championship champion Jordan Farr about some of the low lows and high highs that he's experienced in his career and life recently it was it was a lot of fun dude's a, a good guy other than a great guy other than the gku membership but well, you know whatever what can you do um now it is time to welcome in these beauties here with me this week first up we got mikey podcast aka mikey live bullets um <laughs> we just we were just talking before we got on air about uh this sort of new strategy you got for for parlays on soccer but let's talk about the super bowl do you uh, fire mm. off any bullets what, yesterday? Uh, I was heavy on, on Philadelphia, yes. And Same. I think, yeah, <laughs> I was. Um, had to make up for that. <laughs> and you I'm did in a with like a four-team parlay today on God knows like French, Paraguayan, and Italian leagues teams. Hellas Verona is way better than their seating suggests, my friend. Uh, only Mikey. Only Mikey. Um, next up, fresh off the slopes of Taos. New Mexico. We got Tyler Terrence, who uh, moved heaven and earth, by the way, to to get on the podcast this week and should be appreciated as such. So thank you for hopping on. Um, what's your favorite thing about New Mexico? Ooh. Um, I mean, I'm just going to go with the really cheesy answer and that my family's here. <laughs> I figured you might go that route. Every now and then <laughs> we get a little but window is- into the... So, but this is the first yeah. time that I've skied here, which has been awesome. We did ski Santa Fe, which is a smaller mountain, which is only like half an hour, 45 minutes away from their place. And then we did like a full day trip to Taos, which was 90 minutes, which was incredible. 14,000 feet up in the air, just holding on for dear life, praying, <laughs> praying to baby Jesus Ferreira, just hoping that I'm going to make it down <laughs> the mountain. Okay. <laughs> well, you did. And you're here all in one piece. So uh, congratulations and thank you. Um, so we will move on. We'll get this going. Headlines time. So brace yourself, everybody. As expected, the Fuck Soccer Get Money Super League is back from the dead. Uh, All the gory details have yet to be laid out by the group that is pushing this. And and just as a reminder, this group is sort of led by Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, among others. So, you know, this group has tried with this initial announcement. They've tried to... Uh, address some of the you know some of the the elements that fans hated most last time they they brought this to the table back in 2021 Um, and that first incarnation was you know it was interesting (laughs) because uh, that's the first and maybe last time that I remember pretty much everybody in the world coming together as one in in, you know getting behind something and that is hating uh their their suggestion of the super league so the changes they include this time and by the way this is all sort of fuzzy details they have yet to really lay things out but they basically suggested it's going to be a three-tier structure might remind you of champions league europa league (laughs) uefa uh, conference league Uh, so it's a three-team struck a three-tier structure that would involve promotion and relegation between them (laughs) Uh, it would involve 60 to 80 teams. How they're chosen or invited is still unclear. There's a lot that is unclear at this point. Uh, but importantly, this would be designed to replace and essentially kill uh, the UEFA Champions League, Europa League, and Europa Conference League. It's not going to specifically not going to compete or at least not going to uh, replace domestic leagues. They're, they're, that's uh, going to stay in place now there's no bit been no word from english clubs or the fa or bundesliga uh at this point let's go you mikey what you know so do you hate it do you love it are you waiting for more details before you're willing to make a you know put your your uh your thoughts out what what are you thinking at this point well i've never been shy to put my thoughts out before having all the facts so i'm going to continue doing that (laughs) um two parts of this are one, I think it makes more sense and is more organized than the current iteration of 
I mean, the conference league is how do you have a league pop up overnight? Um, that also play, like it's just a weird thing um, to have it happen and have it kind of be. It seems like a city that was built without a plan right now, and I think reorganizing it isn't the worst thing in the world. But in the other hand, I'm obviously nostalgic and not ready for the Champions League anthem to be on, on Twitter in one of those real OGs remember when this music played. That I'm not ready for that yet. So sure. um, I don't want it to be gone, but I do think there's a better way to organize how UEFA is doing the midweek leagues for sure. Okay. So you're open. You're sort of open-minded. It's Consider me like that's radically pro in this current, the word Super League, in my opinion, but I'm definitely there. Okay, Tyler, what do you think? I mean, I the whole thing is just based on greed and protecting investment. <laughs> like this, this is a business, and like I get it, but um, the fact that this has been surfacing again and it's so ill planned and so fuzzy, like it just gives me the heebie jeebies all over again. Um, and them just mm-hmm strictly addressing the very surface issues that almost every single football fan took to social media to air their grievances about like that doesn't make me feel any better. And as Javier Teba said, one of the biggest, um, you know, he's like one of the biggest, most outspoken people against super league from the normal, from the normalcy right now. And he's the, the chief executive of La Liga. He said, it's a, it's a wolf disguised as a grandma. Um, so don't, <laughs> don't be, don't be fooled by grandma right now because all she wants to do is, sink her fangs into your into your jugular and suck the life out of you um so <laughs> I, I, like this is this is disgusting and i feel like there's there's so much more that needs to happen but as mikey said you know if if they're trying if, if they're if they just had a league pop up overnight recently um that spurs is going to perpetually play in then clearly <laughs> they're then clearly they're short for cash and they and they want to continue to grow the game in a different way and the and the current setup is not working so clearly something needs to change but this super league 2.0 3.0 4.0 i don't care yeah, what it needs a new name for sure <laughs> yeah we'll start can't. there yeah you can't you can't this. just keep calling it super league also don't we already have a women's super league like i don't understand why why are we copying them why can't why can't the powers that be that have all this money hire some sort of creative agency to come up with a better name than super league i mean you just sound I mean, sound, I think you sound I think, like you sound like douchebags when you do that. Like, it's, it's. I think fuck soccer, get money. Super League is pretty much on the money, so I, I'm okay with that. Sticking with that, uh, I did appreciate, uh, you know, enjoy, appreciate, respect ninth place Liverpool fans give, taking shots at the, uh, you know, top four battling Spurs. Spurs right now. I'll give Listen, you little... guy, we're, we're three <laughs> points on the bounce. We back, baby. Jurgen Klopp fist pumping towards the cop. Like, oh I, don't act, don't act as if like Liverpool hasn't been suffering through like just a whole slew of injuries. And Spurs has been like kind of close to fully fit this entire season and is still struggling. Don't. Uh, don't do I don't know what that. We're mentally we've been injured this entire time. Uh, but now back to the Super League and this correctly the, the fuck soccer get money Super League. Like, I'm willing to admit that the system is probably unhealthy, right? There's something that's probably amiss with the system. I'm not willing to call it broken, but Mm-mm. I, I, there is no angels here, right? You got UEFA on the one hand, who I think the big criticism of them is that they're taking, essentially taking too much of the money, of the revenues. Maybe that's true. You know, I, I don't really know. I, I'm not a bean counter. I'm not at, like doing the math on this. But on the other hand, you got clubs... Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Juventus. These clubs are desperate for something. Specifically, Barcelona and Ju- Juventus are desperate for money. Real Madrid <laughs> and Florentino Perez is always perpetually uh, desperate for power. So they, they, their self-interest is what's driving this. So anytime you have some sort of self-interested group who's coming and selling you this hard on something, you always got to be a little sort of critical about it so until we know the details it's hard to sort of just really get into it but i am i I understand mikey's point and actually i appreciate sort of him coming at it with an open mind but anytime somebody tries to sell me something i immediately sort of close off a little bit and get a little critical of it no i'm gonna have an i'm i i want to know where to apply that's why we haven't gotten paid for this podcast (laughs) that's right where can where can i apply for whatever it is that's gonna pop up next (laughs) do not care about tradition that much 
Oh, you said it yourself. I do. You know, the Champions League anthem, there's nothing better than that. If I haven't can, heard it in six years, Sam. I don't can, really even remember it anymore. Good point. This is no, good you've point. heard it. It just doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> no meaning for it's you. In the, it's in the background. I'm like, oh, shit, that's on too. Oh, maybe next season. Maybe next season. Um, yeah, well, listen, we'll just – we'll keep our eye on this. There's more to and come. And can we, can, we uh, can we plug my employers and say if you want a full understanding of what went on with the Super League in the first time around – yeah. And head over to Apple TV. We're on football. Fantastic four episode documentary, I believe, um, on the whole thing. Really in-depth detail on the relationship between Alexander Cheferin, um, the president of UEFA, as well as um, Agnelli from Juventus, who's in charge of the ECA, which is the European Club Association, and sort of uh, literally like epic epic betrayal it's like yeah. actually a <laughs> fantastic drama it's just a good tv show but it also <laughs> happens to be real real that's yeah. sick i mean i remember reading about it and so they were in each other's weddings and all this and he's then- the god on is or or Sheffron is the godfather of on daughter and, and then like, just less than home. and then less than a year later on stabs him in the back and does this whole thing yeah, it yeah. was it was bad and yes i'm gonna go watch that uh biblical so should everybody Who's listening? That to rocks. Um, and while you're there, maybe subscribe to MLS season pass on Apple TV. I don't know. Just so you maybe. can see Tyler's yeah, beautiful put him. And I'm still waiting years. for my code for the free season next year. <laughs> Keep waiting, pal. <laughs> or a, I mean, like your listen. spam box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll move on to the next headline. Southampton has fired their manager, and I would be willing to bet that maybe. Mm, 10% of people listening actually knew who their manager was. I'm just going to throw that out there. Come on, it's Ralph. <laughs> it was Ralph, but now it's Nathan Jones for the last however many, a couple months. So they fired Nathan oh. Jones. And, you know, as not surprising as that is, the short list of candidates were made for some interesting reading. So according to the bookies, uh, the one I saw was Skybet, the, the number one candidate is Steven Gerrard who was, you know, recently let go from Aston Villa. Number two on the list at four to one, a certain Jesse Marsh, who I think a lot of people listening here will know all about. So um, Tyler, let's go to you first. Would this be a good thing for Marsh? And would this be a good thing for U.S. soccer fans? I, I went back and forth in this when I saw the news. And I think I've fallen on the side of like, yeah, it'd be great if Jesse could hold out and get a job that almost isn't assuredly going to uh, be a death sentence. But like the truth of the matter is, is I don't know if anybody of a higher caliber than Southampton would offer him a job right now. So yeah, I'd rather just have him in the Premier League and see if he can work some magic and get them out um, and keep them up than not have him in at all. I, I just think that being there and being on the touchline for Premier League is more important than like, having the right situation Um, because if he were to fail and if they were to get relegated, whatever it might be like I, I, the few, the next employer isn't going to be like, Oh, you're just a bad coach. Like, no, he's been in two. If he were to get the Southampton job, he'd be in two impossible situations. Um, And it shows that he's willing to work with like a group that is destitute and wants to work with a project and doesn't, you know, doesn't need, uh, you know, the glamour and the money to be able to, to work. Um, and that he, and that he wants to try uh, to take on a challenge, which I think is important. The world needs losers too. Somebody's yeah, got to But do we need, you know, the, the heir apparent to the U S manager's position to be, you know, sort of cast in the light as being a loser like that. Can we, can we get Jim Curtin to go with Jesse Marsh to do a trial run with Southampton keep them up, then go to, to the U S after that. I want you to, I want you to stop funneling your mind down to him being the coach, please. <laughs> Mikey, you're anti Jim Curtin, huh? No, I'm just, anti. I just think, I just no, have I bigger yeah, hopes for 26 than Jesse Marsh. I yeah. I just, the, the fact that you, you're, and you're spreading this gospel more, more than most Sam. And I think, correct. You, I think Am you need I? to dial it back. What what I'm I'm not like pushing him as like so when I said heir apparent I was sort of being tongue in cheek a little bit. <laughs> no, you weren't. You're I'm, just I'm thinking he's, you think he's a shoe in. in your head. You think it's like minus two. No, I don't. I actually don't. I, I'm not sure what U.S. soccer is thinking at this point, and I don't think that we will have any idea. Well, what do they, you want? You want you want him? I would I would I would take him right now. I would take him. <laughs> oh, uh, you take him. What I, if I, he I would, takes you? Well. Listen, if he needs an assistant who knows absolutely jack shit about uh, 
everything, you know, I'm, I'm available. Well, as Sam, long as I Sam, can work hasn't, Sam hasn't pressed since the Bush administration. So <laughs> that's, that's out of the picture. <laughs> Um, Biel- Bielsa would never play coach Sam. He would never. <laughs> Listen, enough about Sam. Um, the I I just sort of I coiled at the the instinctive response from a lot of U.S. soccer fans that we have to get somebody for it. I don't like that. Uh, Are people still know. saying that? Yeah, absolutely. On Twitter and Instagram, I get I get comments on that uh, all the time. Yeah, and then you're probably really nice to them and you don't speak any reason to them. You're like, oh my God, thanks so much for listening. What a great take. Like, I'm so glad you DM'd us. Why don't sometimes, you speak sometimes, some truth? Sometimes, sometimes I fire back. It, 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 it depends if I'm having a good day or a bad day. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I think Marsh should be on the list of candidates and I don't think the Leeds experience was disqualifying. How about that? No, and there's only 20, there's only 20 jobs managing in the best league in the world. I'd like to always have an American in there somewhere. So that's Pretty fair. Good. It's a risk though, right? This Southampton team is not good. It's a risk uh, for what? For his kind of his reputation. Um, it's a risk that I mean, like if you want him as the US coach, it's a risk that he wouldn't so be if available. He were to for take that. over Southampton right now and they were to get relegated and then fired. He's no longer available. But if he weren't to take the Southampton job and shy away from it then that makes him eligible shy away from it. Well, I mean, I don't know if we, we, you know, would would we ever know sort of that? No, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, but like, I just, I'm with Mikey. I think that having an American on the touchline in the best league in the world is that can never be a bad thing. Yeah. I like that element of it. I like that element. I'm just sort of As they're getting battered. I won't give a shit. There's risk here. There's risk here of, you know, he just got fired from Leeds um, going to Southampton, which is a team that, by all accounts, and the bookies have them as a strong favorite to go down. It's just not a, a great situation. I said the same thing about Gerard, and well, not Gerard, uh, Lampard. Uh, all you need is all you need is one win. That's it. Just get pick up coming in post windows. Tough. Nobody expects anything. He's fine. It's tough. Yeah, and right. Low expectations. I just don't. Of, I don't think yeah. he's going to end up. I Stevie will end up getting that job. Jesse's style is too reckless for a, a team that's at the bottom of a relegation battle right now. Like you can't. And, yeah, you can't do that. I Look what he did with Leeds with resurrecting them. If you can get a reputation doing that, you can work forever. All right. Well, we'll see. It's it's out there. And uh, Sean Dyche. I'm sure they got to hire somebody soon. All right, a couple of housekeeping notes. So go subscribe, everybody, right now to the Sam's Army page on YouTube. So it's YouTube backslash at Sam's Army, at sign Sam's Army. Very clever name. Uh, and now it is time to announce the winners of our weekly commenter award. I forgot last week. Shame on me. So Ian Berger, I hope I'm saying that right. Berger, Berger, um, because it's got an E at the end. So it's like Berger, but then it's got an E at the end. I don't know. It sounds French. I'm sure. I'm sure. My my pronunciation is uh, pretty shit. Um, Number two, last week's winner, Matt Wolf. I forgot to give you your flowers last week, Matt. My apologies. And then this week, winner, uh, Brian Tenner. So you guys are the winners Mm. of some merch. Congratulations. Everybody else, go to the YouTube page. Number one, subscribe. Number two. What did they say? What did they say? Oh, I didn't have it written down. By the way, is this the Matt Wolf that has designed like half of the badges in Major League Soccer? I don't know. W-U-L-F-F? Nope, not him. Okay. Uh, He's just, it's, it's, uh. He sounds like he plays in the second Bundesliga. He does. does sound very, uh, well, no, he plays for Accrington Stanley in League One. <laughs> so, everybody, True. go comment, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, win some merch. You guys have merch coming your way. All right, weekly what if time. So, I'm really going to need you guys to put your thinking caps on for this. Tyler's already warned us that he's uh, not in a position to really do that right now, but that's okay. Um, so, I am. Weekly what if. I know Mikey's right here. Um, so let's let's say there's a hypothetical stock market out there that lists every, you know, it lists every club in, in the world. Um, and basically what it is, is about the size of the club. You can use your own definition for that, whether it's trophies, yeah. whether it's whatever. What club would you want to buy or short shares of? Oh shit! Going forward, so you know the, a club that you think is basically on the rise. Uh, like example, for years I kept saying Newcastle is a sleeping giant, sleeping giant, sleeping giant. 
This was back when what's his name? Uh, Fat Ashley was owner. Uh, he finally sold him. This was, I was not saying this because I thought the Saudi Arabian, whatever the, the government or not government, it was going to come in and buy them and basically inject more money than, than God into them. But it, they just have a huge, huge fan base. And like, they were just so beaten down over the years, but they were ready to go in the right direction. And sure enough, uh, they are, they are on our ass. So that would be a, a, an example of a team that if you had bought five or six years ago would be a fantastic investment. So uh, you can, and you can go the other way. You can short sell them as well. If you think that they're going to go down. So Mikey, we'll start with you. Damn. That's one of that. This is one of my favorite things because I spend most of my time watching the standalone weekday shit fests that these leagues put out. And I get to see some of the world's worst, a team that has lot. I'm going to, I'm going to be nice to one team and very mean to another team. I think that Sevilla are in complete fucking disarray and I'm selling the shit out of them. I think they're aging out of a time when they're still trying to hold on to it with, with Jesus Navas kind of being like the dictator of play. I don't like them very much, and I don't like betting on them. They don't score goals. I think they're old um, and due for an overhaul. I think going down could be something good for them, possibly. Um, and the team that's lost me a lot of money that I'm still very high on because the last four weeks they have been disappointing is Lons in the French League. Um, Fofana and those guys are young. They're nasty. There's a guy, David Costa, a 21 year old, who's probably going to be sold for 75 plus million at some point. Um, and that's enough to build off of. And I did hear a story once that a guy, uh, worked his way up to own the lawn sporting union, which is like a bunch of sailing teams and the soccer club. And I was like, fuck, that's awesome. That's the coolest job ever. So I do love that club. And if I get to be an investor in it, I would, I would def- definitely take that up. So Lance in France and uh, Sevilla selling. Okay. I like it. I knew you'd come up with, you know, I, I fucking I'm love that question. That is my favorite thing ever. I'm shocked. You didn't throw like a, a that, that was, that, that is probably your best uh, weekly. What if, <laughs> That's the well a good one. Okay. I want to do a new one every week. <laughs> Keep it going. Tyler, you got anything for us? Good or bad? You know, selling or um, buying? So this is going to be the equivalent of like buying Dogecoin um, when it was like 0.0003 cents. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but I think I've mentioned it on this pod before. Uh, Cancun FC and Liga, uh, Liga de Expansión. Uh, you have. Um, so they are owned by Jeff Lanau, Leno of, of the Houston Astros and all of his analytic analytical uh, cronies. Um, they also own Leganes uh, in Spain. So if I could Sweet. do like a dual package of like two teams that I can buy specifically, you know, awesome. the Dojo point one is Cancun FC. They also just got drilled by the fire in preseason in Cancun a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> five, nothing. I imagine that they played their second team because they're in the middle of their season, but Nevertheless, uh, I will buy 100 shares of, of Cancun FC for, you know, like less than less than a cent um, for each one of them. And hopefully it'll be worth like $15 in 10 years and then I'll cash out. <laughs> OK, all right. I mean, when Liga MX and, and MLS combine, you know, they're probably going to be. Can- the- Cancun FC is going to win League's Cup uh, in 2037. <laughs> that's that's that, that's my big payday. <laughs> Oh man, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out that I think Tyler's probably gonna shit on, but I would buy it in the Chicago Fire, the team you just mentioned, the team you uh, work for or used to work for. I listen, they have on the field been a mess for a while, but <laughs> they've got enough. They got first of all, they got Mansueto's you know mega billions. They got a city that you know is waiting for a winner hope to god they can figure out the stadium situation i just think that like it's it's a kind of a sleeping giant not in the way that not to the same extent that newcastle was but i really think that the fire and and in this city which loves soccer if they get it right like they could be on the way up and i'm also excuse me uh clearing my throat uh, I don't have a cough button like you professionals, Tyler. Uh, but the don't you have a cough button for your <laughs> announcers or whatever? Um, the the fire is what I'm also baking into that is the fact that that MLS is is I would buy in on because I think that the league, you know, is on the on the upswing okay. still. Can I can I interject here for a yeah, second? Yeah, you can shit on my my theory. It's not a sh- I'm not shitting on it. It's just <laughs> do it. It seems foolish to buy into a team where a league uh, just loves parity so much and the entire roster building uh, scenario is built around 
teams making the playoffs every other year. And like, you know, they're, they want to get like 18 teams in the playoffs next year, whatever it might be like for you to want for the one team in the world, for you to want to buy into, you want to buy into a league where they're trying not to have dynasties and they're trying not to have the same <laughs> team make the playoffs every single year. It just seems like a poor investment, but you know, what do I know? My, this... my Robin Hood, my Robin Hood account has been in the red since 2020. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is kind of a, a rising tide lifts all boats investment to a certain extent because i i think that you know mls is is going one direction i agree and i and i think and i agree with everything that you say with chicago you know being a sleeping giant when it comes to being a soccer city but you know we talked about being due for something uh last week i believe with mitchell um the fire are due to make the postseason by mls <laughs> mechanisms i mean them and the houston dynamo have missed out the last five years in a row and those are the two longest streaks like and those are the longest streaks in the league right now it's only five years that's not that long the jets have missed out 11 years in a row that league's built on parity too so could be another <laughs> six years for the fire you never know but now i'm throwing in all my sports misery into one one little take here but anyway, <laughs> now if you're going to short sell i was interested to see if you, anybody was going to say man city do you think that no. No, they're just they got too much money, and you know the the Sheik Mansoor is not going anywhere. So even if they get slammed, they're 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 still gonna come right back and totally fine. Yeah, okay. Fulham, <laughs> Fulham or Fulham, Fulham, Fulham. Are you buying I or mean, selling? No, I'm shorting them. I think that they're about to collapse. You want to talk about a collapse? If forests go down, start to short sell the fuck. That'd be a forest fire. <laughs> nice. Forest fire. Nice well done, there. Mikey. Well done. Anyway, thank you, guys. Um, listen, I I can't say I can't jump on board with that because I you know I got a couple of forest fan friends. And, I mean, they they're leveraging. I know with it's, all these listen, short term loans. We've seen this story before. It's been <clears> a few years, but hopefully playing FIFA manager, playing football manager. Hopefully they get their shit together. Um, all right, Premier League time. Let's start with you, Mikey. So. What was, you know, there were some interesting games this weekend. I mean, obviously the, um, you know, Arsenal drawing with Brentford, I'm sure will come up, uh, but there were some other <laughs> ones. Leicester just, just molly whopping Tottenham. Um, Leicester could score goals. Spank with James Madison. They are a different team. Said that last week. Uh, Bournemouth eking out a draw with uh, Newcastle. Man City spanking Aston Villa. But what, what game stands out to you as sort of the most interesting from the weekend? Oof. And you, I mean, you can say Arsenal. Arsenal feels significant, obviously, based on circumstance and a loss against City on Wednesday. We'll see us fall to second in the table, which is never a good thing to feel and see. Um, but in isolation, Brentford played well, probably deserved more from that game than they got. Uh, a couple missed opportunities early. Um, I don't think Arsenal were clear and far away the better team. It sucks that it had to happen that way. And, and obviously, we'll get into the VAR of it all later. But um, in isolation, based on performance, pretty just. So I'm not going to say that was the most surprising or the like craziest or most impactful for me. I thought, obviously, the Southampton one is a huge six-pointer. Um, looking at the bottom of the table, it, got, it cost a guy his job. Granted, I don't know who he was. But going down to 10 men and coming from behind and winning a match is enough to change the trajectory of some individuals and team successes. And I think Wolves um, might look to ride this into safety if they can. But uh, they have some talented players. So um, I think this was a big one uh, if you're looking at the bottom half of the table because the big one in the top half is on Wednesday. That's true. Uh, especially big for for Wolves coming off of, you know, that 3-0 thumping, albeit with some some fortunate bounces against Liverpool last yep. week. You know, Wolves, they've got some players, right? You always hear about, you know, the Ruben Nevises and uh, Daniel Potences and these, these guys that all the bigger clubs wouldn't mind getting their hands on. But they were so bad uh, in Triori. I forgot Triori. But, like, they're, they were so bad in the first half of the season that perhaps we perhaps we had them under, you know, estimated at this point. The last two games, um, you know, they've at least shown us a little something. So maybe their January transfer business, as we thought, was was not so bad. Uh, Tyler, so what uh, what game stands out for you? Um, I agree with Mikey. And then... I mean, can I can I say Liverpool? Can I say that yeah. that's a shock? That's a shocking. It's a shocking complete performance from my from my group. <laughs> Great uh, game. I mean, it was just like a Bicetich is like for Salah to come out and say that since he's arrived that Bicetich has been the best player like in training and in the games that he's played in is pretty telling. 
um, of how bad Liverpool has been <laughs> recently. <laughs> um, if we're being completely honest here, but um, yeah, I, like I, I just think that that is you know a derby win amidst just a, a slew of poor results and trying to you know what are we nine ten points out from from top four right now? It's not anywhere close to unrealistic, um, but we just kind of needed that type of performance in order to maybe spark something and no better way to do it than in the Derby. So I was, I certainly wasn't going in with any expectations for this game. I was expecting either a nil, nil draw or a one, one, nil loss. Right. I mean, you got to keep it in, in perspective. It was Everton and yeah, Everton did just beat uh champions elect Arsenal last week, but uh, you know, they're still Everton at the end of the day. Yeah. There's no, it's just anymore anywhere. I think. <laughs> no, I, I listen these, had, That's had what the Arsenal taken about. care of business, had Arsenal taken care of business last week, would you be singing the same tune? Lost to Everton too. So I mean, there's there's a string of bad performances here. I don't. I think there's a blip. And we're I'm not saying the one. Everton. I'm saying had you beaten taken Everton. six? Oh, um, no, probably not. I still okay. think everything's hard. I, but it's been a lot tighter than the gap suggests. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, other games. Uh, I, your, your Liverpool, it was a, it was a complete 90 minutes. Uh, I just, Everton really brought nothing to the table today. And I don't know if that's maybe a credit to you guys, you know, um, the other games, Todd, um, we just, we suck. What happened? <laughs> we stink. We just stink. <laughs> but without Romero in the back, you know, that late red card he got the week before clearly had an impact. Um, James Madison Harder. is a difference maker for Lester. I've been saying that for a couple weeks now. Uh, they were just Lester is is not as bad as as they were. We we're talking about how bad the Wolves were, the Wolves, how bad Wolves were like uh, the first half. Like Lester was just as bad, but I feel like they've got a higher ceiling than Wolves, and they're showing it. They they look good. We looked like shit. That the Betancourt injury, ACL, um, whatever rupture explosion, is gonna be. It sucks. That sucks. That guy's good. He helped us a lot. He solidified our midfield. I don't know who we're going to get to Champions League. I have no clue who we're going to start against AZ Milan. Why do I feel like for the past 10 years, you guys have always been one injury away from like rattling off like 10 results without a win? Well, it's because Tottenham doesn't (laughs) – that's fair. I mean, that's a fair assessment. (laughs) It's partially because we don't spend like a big six club. We don't. I don't know, man. You guys – spend money i just don't think you spend it the right i think you hit on like half of your players and then like you have players on your team they're just not the right ones like oh, you do spend money there's some truth to that i'm sure but it, just look at like the the um you know the salary spend that that spurs have relative to the rest of the big six we're we're you know we're uh we're quite far down below so i'm just mm-hmm. we're, we're a thin we've always been a thin team We've always been I thin. knew the answer to the question. I just wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> yeah. So we we were thin and we stink. And Benton Kerr's injury is uh really uh depressing. And here we go, Champions League. Oh boy, I can't wait. Should be fun. Um, other games though, we had uh Manchester United getting a, a little bit of revenge on Leeds. Uh so Leeds got a draw in midweek. And now they, you know, Manchester United went to their, uh, went to Ellen Road and came away 2-0 winners. Um, you know, there's some other ones. West Ham, Chelsea. This is actually going to get in with with the refing dis- discussion, which we have to have. The refing was, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people say it's never been worse, blah, blah, blah. I have some thoughts on that, but I'll get you guys' thoughts here first. So there were three huge decisions. There was a the goal that was disallowed in Bristol, uh, in Brighton Crystal Palace, there was the VAR decision where Lee Mason just forgot to draw the lines uh, on the <laughs> on a player from Brentford that you know resulted in Brentford's only goal, which was the game time goal. And then there was the West Ham Chelsea game where everybody with eyes could see that that was a penalty on Thomas Suchek. I mean, like I, I've, I had, a, I went back and forth with some people on, on Twitter about it. Sometimes I can actually see people's, you know, side of things, not on this one. That was just, a, just nailed on penalty. I don't understand what Vieira was looking at. You're missing so, one. What, what was the other one? Lamina sent off for being the third player to approach the referee. 
yeah. which is a rule that the guy just made up on the spot. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, that 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 just sounds like a, a ref being a doofus. Everyone knows that we, the third guy we up. Start, can we start with the forgetting of the drawing the line? Because I just think that for Let's. them to come out for them to come out and say that, um, and I've been crying about this for years now. Um, because I don't like authority if if anybody has has picked up on that recently. But um and I think that somebody like a referee who's protected for whatever reason to the utmost, that's like saying if I went to go do my job week one of major league soccer and I just forgot to speak. <laughs> it's the equivalent. <laughs> Your VAR. When it comes to like mo- probably what your job is going to entail on the day is offside. So mm-hmm. your job is to draw that. Your main job is to draw the line. My main I job see is- it applied so well in like World Cups or some other leagues with the 3D shit. What are we it's, doing? It's, Why does it require it's, somebody it's drawing? Particularly phenomenal. Nobody needs to draw anything ever. Actually, to be but exact. But if you do have, but if you do have to draw it, draw it. Don't forget to draw <laughs> you it. Probably draw, draw it. it. So, so who 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 was it that forgot to draw it again? Lee Mason. Lee Mason. Lee Mason. Okay. Lee, so Mason. Lee Mason, in my in my humble opinion, should be suspended for the next three games and probably shouldn't get paid. He should have why, to work. Why should, why should a ref why should a referee be treated any 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 different than a player or a coach or somebody else who blatantly violates or like or like a player who doesn't come to training or sleeps in late or shows up late to the whatever it might be like these people need to be held accountable the same way that other professionals in this world are these guys for whatever reason just because it's a difficult job get there's no repercussions for for poor performances or for forgetting to do your job forget poor performances that happens i have a bad day at the office every now and again i'm sure mikey fucks up on a podcast every now and again sam never fucks up never beautiful never (laughs) but poor performances is one thing forgetting to do your job is another what was he what was he high i don't understand like there has to be repercussions for that. He should not be allowed back to a game for the next like three or four. I'm not going to defend him. I will say that we should build him a statue. I want a statue of Lee Mason in, in North. He's Florida. taken more points off of Arsenal than any other team this season. This season I feel so like far. you've also said that about four other referees this this season already. Probably, probably. Anthony but this Taylor, one, like you said one that about it. multiple. Mitch, Mitch says the same. You guys all say like, "Oh, this guy hates Arsenal so much." Like you've said that about three different referees. Oh, I thought you were talking about me building statues to, to Lee no, Mason. No, 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 not Mikey. building statues. I'm talking about Mikey saying that this certain referee has taken this amount of points off of some, off of my team. So let me ask you this, Mikey. I'm not putting you on the spot for something you've said, but I've heard a lot of people, especially on Twitter, who are adamant that there is some sort of campaign against their club. I've heard it about <laughs> Chelsea. I've heard it about Liverpool. I've heard it about United. I've heard it about Arsenal. What? Where do you come down on that? I think this has got to be, you have to talk about the FA and who runs the FA basically, right? We're not not having this. This isn't a real conversation. You're being facetious with this whole thing, right? (laughs) I'm just saying when they show guys celebrating up in the booth, when Arsenal get conceded on that bias comes from somewhere. And I think there's a deep rooted hatred of Arsenal within the, I think within the media and the bias covered. Yeah, I believe that's true. I do. All right. I'm going to unmute Tyler now. Oh, I can't. Oh, can I? Are you unmuted? There you go. Um, <laughs> the so I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come on if I knew that something like this was going to pop up. And Mikey would think that's it. I wouldn't have showed up. <laughs> I I I completely di- I am very dismissive of I- any suggestions that there is actual corruption or a campaign for or against any club. I I just think that roughing is a really tough job. And mm. listen, there's no excuse for not drawing lines. Like that's just that is bonkers. And the fact that it happened is ridiculous. I will say this: the fact that I don't think a lot of people realized in like while the play like real time and whatever. Were you, Mikey, thinking, okay, that's an offsides? Like that's no. what they're gonna right. So th- this is such a close call that it comes down to like the spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. And yes, he was offsides, the letter of the law, spirit of the law. Like if nobody sees it real time, just like a handball, that's a pick don't and see choose argument. Time, it, 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 it for sure I is. Will, I will not be going with the spirit of something. I'm sorry. When it comes to a sporting event, I can't, I, <laughs> as, as much of a spiritual, as much of a spiritual human being I am, I like just do it by the letter of the law. Even if the letter of the law sucks, you can rewrite it the following year. But to but to have it be opinionated and 
who's ever feeling particularly spiritual on the day. I feel like that's a little. For sure. I'm not, I'm not yeah. letting Lee Mason off. The hook. I do think he deserves a statue, but like, I'm not letting him off the hook. Like I, he, that's a completely embarrassing error. And you're right. He should be suspended. Like he should, I know that the, the, whoever the ref was for the palace Brighton game, he's suspended. They took him off VAR duty for, you know, the next week or whatever. I mean, Lee Mason deserves at least. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be the head ref, He'll be the head referee the following week. They took him off VAR. They'll put him <laughs> right. in the middle. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, lastly, this week, I mean, we got the biggest game. Mikey, is this the biggest game of the season coming up on Wednesday? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest game of your lifetime. Uh, no, that's that's not how I feel about it. To be completely transparent. <laughs> Wow! It sounds name like... a bigger name a bigger game. I think the United one felt bigger. I think it was like the City one is always like I, I think Arsenal's. This is going to sound so weird. I think people think Arsenal can win the title, but I don't think they think they're better than City. So I think a head to head isn't as pressured as picking up points at home against a rival like United was. So I think I think losing these two games is what everybody assumes is going to happen. And then we're going to take care of business against teams that we should, should beat and city's going to slip up somewhere. That's what I think people think is going to happen. Tyler. <laughs> um, so you haven't been in a title race uh, ever really, <laughs> in your lifetime. So let me explain something to you. All right. Oh boy. When you're in a title race and there's three points separating you and the team that's below you. Okay. And yeah. they, and they get, and they catch up to you similar to what city did to Liverpool. Uh, 18, 19, maybe. When um, I think it was Sané scored and City ended up winning 2-1 or 2-0 at the Etihad. And then City cracks on and wins like 18 games in a row. <laughs> if they catch you, they, they, they will bury you. This isn't this <laughs> like when they when they are on 51 points and you're on 51 points, and then all the guys in the locker room, the wheels are starting to turn, Jesus still isn't healthy, and they're just like, oh shit, here, here they come. Like yeah. this is this is by far the biggest game of your fandom for Arsenal. Like I I cannot stress that enough. If you get a draw, <laughs> great. But like for City to potentially win this game and draw level on points, they will crack on and win the league. I promise you. Promise you. And they've done that. <laughs> Is he you know, if you ask of his beal? Sam, if you ask me with context, if I was super upset we got publicly wronged by the referees right before the city match, now I'm thinking that that's probably not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> it is interesting. You 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 sought to downplay the game, clearly, but it's clearly, yeah, but at the same time, you got this quiet confidence coming from the fact that you were admittedly you know done done dirty so what do you think about this game i think it's gonna be really tense i don't think it's gonna be as like flowy i don't think it's gonna be liverpool when they played city in those runs it was always like three twos and two twos and like guys were going after it those Those are the best best. i don't think it's gonna live i don't think it's gonna be like that you think i hope i'm wrong i have a feeling it's gonna look a lot like city you think it will be that would be great like our game earlier this year, kind of. Well, because like... yeah, because city city doesn't care who they're playing; they're just going to go. They're going to go after it and get it. And you guys are good enough to the point where, like, if you turn them over or you know whatever it might be, like you're going to have space to go the other way. You guys both play phenomenal football. Like this is like when City's playing against another really good team, it typically yields a very very good game unless it's Spurs and they sit in for ninety minutes. Like it's true, that's true, and so, they lose. I think that this I think that this will <laughs> look different than a city Liverpool game, but we'll still have that like popcorn, you know, yeah, like oh, the chance on it, it could even look better than than a Liverpool City game. It will look different, but it but like in terms of the you know, this is the the master and the and the and the student. This is this is what it's all about. And like I hope that Pep breaks out something he never taught Arteta and you know Arteta breaks out something that he never shared with Pep when they were together. And yeah, I don't know what that looks like, but um <laughs> I, I I'm so excited for this game. And yeah. I know Mikey's trying to downplay it to do the reverse jinx thing. And I will not fall into that trap, even though I already have. But um... <laughs> I'm downplaying it because I'm shaking my tits off, Sam. I'm freaking out. Yeah. I, I know. Well, at least you admitted, you know, publicly. I, I, you could tell that you're, you're just kind of, you're not, listen, when I, when there's something that I want so badly, I always, you know, downplay it as well. So I, I understand. De Bruyne, is, De Bruyne has, royally like ass fucked us since i first 
since he first put on a city jersey, every time he plays us, it's two goals and an assist. He needs he a good is. performance. I know but he's been yeah. bad lately. So I yeah, can't watch him run around due. against the red and white and be like, I'm confident. I feel like he's <laughs> a fucking due. monster. Pep did take um, Holland off at halftime uh, against Villa. I don't know if they they said some thing about maybe he had a knock. His that, hamstring had, had that, pulled no, out right around thirty eighth. Wasn't it the collision with um what's his face with the uh, Emmy Martinez? Oh, it could be one of yeah. those. Where he got, yeah. where he got called for a I foul thought he pulled up with his elbow hand in the face. Yeah, it's one of those two things. But yeah, I think he. It's just. By the rest. way, was he was he trying to pick out Gundogan on the back post with that assist? Or was he just lashing it across the middle of the goal? I thought he was. There. I thought that was. I thought that was intentional. I don't know. I would like to think it's intentional, but I like he just hit it so fucking hard. It was such a good ball. I was like, <laughs> you can't be that good at passing too, can he? Perfect. Right. Exactly. Well, it was perfection. Right. Um, other games this weekend. So I mean, it's interesting that we got this game on Wednesday. Arsenal hosting City. I mean, it doesn't get bigger than this for the title race, but it's actually going to overlap with uh champions league so we got i mean we got some huge huge games in the midweek but before we get to uh those games in in champions league let's quickly look at the weekend um any games stand out to you guys uh so we're past the the wednesday game there's there's some games here like newcastle liverpool uh a newly a newly i don't know a vibrant liverpool uh, mm. visiting Newcastle could be a it's, big one. It's a classic. It's an old old school Premier League game. Very much so. Very much so. We got Everton Leeds, which is very much a six pointer. Uh, United hosting Leicester City. I don't know what mm. games stand out to you, Mikey. I mean, Tottenham West Ham is the most dreadful thing I've ever seen right now. Those games the always just stink. an eyesore. I know the two British. Yeah, whatever. Um, I think. Uh, I mean. Chelsea Southampton, Chelsea need to win, and I think Mudrick needs a performance. So I'm going to have an eyeball on Mudrick. Um, I think he's might be worth a little teasing in terms of some any time goal or something like that, uh, because they have looked really underwhelming with those two together. Felix has looked great, honestly, except for the math, the um, malicious intent. Um, Newcastle Liverpool is the best one of the weekend, and then Wolves. I think it's not. I'm not going to put them in my best bet because they're minus one fifty, but. Uh, they will beat Bournemouth, and I think that'll be a good performance from them. So, what about, Bright- what about Brighton and Fulham? Yeah, and Brentford Palace too is actually pretty some good players in those games. Um, Brighton at home to Fulham, they should beat them pretty pretty handily. I think four, three or four goals for Brighton. I bet, they I score bet you at Fulham, home. Fulham's going to get a result. Ooh. Even though I just said that they're going to collapse, I think that they're going to you're going to both collapse. sides of that one. <clears throat> and Mikey's allegedly a dream teamer is, is being so dismissive of they're going to get smacked. Smacked. <laughs> that's wow. Yeah, they're going to get smacked. I mean, that's a good shout. Six, Brighton's in sixth, Fulham's in seventh. That's wild. It's a great game. Yeah, that's, good shout. That's really, that's wild. I would have never thought to click and see where they were in the table, to be totally fair. I was going to say, I was like, if I had told you, you know, in week 25 that these two teams were going to be in sixth and seventh, respectively, in the table, I think you would have. Uh... Probably the sixth and seventh best team so far. <laughs> yeah, got to give them some credit. They're not there by accident. Um, all right. Yeah, it's a, a an interesting weekend. Um, but let's let's crack on and, and hit the rest of the world where Champions League is back. And we are down to. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. what is a round of sixteen at this point? Yep. So we got. So you mentioned Chelsea. Chelsea has a midweek game. Um, they they visit Dortmund on Wednesday. Club Bruges, Benfica on Wednesday. The big one, the big one. PSG hosting Bayern on Tuesday, uh, along with AC Milan and uh, and Tottenham. Yeah, no, it's it's not like Liverpool Real Madrid, a rematch of like two Champions League finals in the past. But like that's four. next week. That's next week. Is it next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's next week. So they, oh. they split them up in, into oh, two geez. weeks. No worries. Uh, but I mean, yeah, that, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one as well. I'll give you that. Uh, but no, I was just talking about the this week. But we can actually talk about all around of 16. I mean, it, obviously, we're, you and I will be uh, sort of keyed in on our teams. Uh, and then there's PSG Bayern. But Mikey, which which game, which of these sort of eight games stands out to you as as most interesting as as an unbiased third party? Well, first to be a dickhead about it, 
if you told me Milan and Tottenham were playing in a European fixture, it could have be any of the three <laughs> right true. now. That's fair. Yeah, well, we know. I don't think <laughs> either get, one of us belongs. For, 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 for it to be right AC now. Milan, Tottenham, and it to be the answer to be a Champions League knockout round, that is plus money, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> you have to get that shot in there before. I, you, before is, <laughs> absolutely, just breathtaking. That these, we have to watch these two. Europa. Okay. We have to watch these two fucking teams play each other. Um, I think uh, this is not sexiest, but I think Inter Porto would be fun. I think there's gonna be a lot of goals in that fixture. I'm serious. I think Inter score a lot of goals, and I think Porto's made themselves known in Champions League as somebody that they can beat uh, some teams. So I think there's value in that. And then the other one, obviously, is just Bellingham against Enzo Fernandez in the middle of the park in, in Dortmund, Chelsea. I think that'll be really fun to watch those two guys. Arguably the two most expensive midfielders in the world playing against each other twice is going to be fun. So, Dortmund um, have won probably. like 1,700 games in a row. Um, <laughs> if, if, Dortmund, if Dortmund embarrasses Chelsea uh, at Signal Iduna, is there a possibility that Graham is sacked in the morning? I think they're going to beat them pretty well. So do I. And I think Gio is going to have a hand in something. That'd be <laughs> Off the bench? Off the bench. Yeah, he's been he's been doing – Maybe he'll start. No, maybe he'll start. Uh, he has. He did. He started last game. He didn't, he didn't actually play that well, if we're just going to be completely honest. But uh, he has been a, a, a problem off of the bench. Now, PSG Bayern. Mikey, I know you got some thoughts on this. I, I, think, I think Bayern's going to beat him and beat him quickly. I think it's going to happen in the first 15, 20 minutes tomorrow. Um, or is this when PSG starts playing? They they've not been good. They yeah. have not been good, but they so they just gave Verratti his first start. They're kind of rotating him. He sat last game, so I expect him to be fully fit for this one. He's kind of the difference there. They've got some kids playing some crucial minutes in some of these French fixtures. I wonder if that's all just pointed to Tuesday, which it could very well be, and I could be an idiot. But I think um, that they have some guys playing that are below – the caliber for this for this level that are that putting next to world superstars so that's usually not a good combination to beat a team like Bayern. so uh i think that's the pretty weighted scale for Bayern tomorrow in that one and it's Bayern that you know they're doing their normal thing where they're you know starting. they're ticking into gear right now they right. they went like five games on one one draws and then all of a sudden it's like six two five one so they're yeah, this is not the time you want to play Bayern. And PSG starts guys with hyphenated names right now, and I don't think that's going to go well. Wow. Just a total shot. Out of- Shout out. Wow, Mikey. Did not realize not how, I didn't realize how misogynistic band. you were. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, uh, we could play do you know these players, and you would. the answer would be no. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the fact uh, Warren that Warren Zaire been- Emery is 16 years old. He starts every game now. Like we got, we got guys. Don't, yeah. don't walk this back because you made a you made a pretty chauvinistic. I'm serious. Comment. That's not chauvinistic. <laughs> How is it? You basically bashed on people with hyphenated last names. He was just. I'm just saying. I don't know what that. He doesn't know. He's talking about names. He doesn't know. <laughs> in, in this specific case, there were two guys with hyphenated names. Loftus Cheek. You know him. I do know him. <laughs> okay, Chupa Boting, um, who's on the other side of that game. Okay. Um, listen, I'm I'm excited. For the Champions League, I'm not so excited for Milan Tottenham. I'll be honest, I am not so excited. What a Thank shit show. God. Thank God Milan kind of stinks because we stink right now. Kind of, they really stink. I know, but they. Can I think that this is us. like maybe one of the first round of sixteen Champions League games where I'm just sort of emphatically like, I will not turn this on. If it ends zero zero, I'm gonna just boo the TV as loud as I can. <laughs> it's it's good because PSG and Bayern are playing at the same time, so you don't even have to worry about it. You don't you don't even well, usually I'm multiple screens because I'm not a pilgrim and you know I'm living in 2023, but I can assure you that if I'm having multiple screens up, I'll have <laughs> one of the PSG Bayern game in English and one of the PSG Bayern game in Spanish. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, listen, I'm not I'm not defending our our you know or maybe in Francais. So I can hear the, the under two and a half is minus 140 in the AC Milan Tottenham game. There's no way that game gets to three goals ever. I mean, first I mean, of all, there said, is. You said that. Have you seen our defense? There absolutely is a way that that game could get <laughs> could get over two and a half. Who's scoring? Uh, God, God, if I know. Uh, all right, let's finish up here. So, oh, wait, quick. FPL. I forgot to do FPL. Oh, we God. haven't done this in a while. I got to give a shout out to the guys who are guys and or girls who are at the top of the Sam's Army Podcast League, which is somewhere where I am 
absolutely nowhere near. Uh, I'm in like 300 and something this place. Adams Family FC. Carlos Gomez is in first place. Shout out to Carlos Gomez. Diaz Nuts. Peter Bell in second. The Chosen Ones. Kieran Holloway is third. DeYoung and the Restless. Mike Evans is in fourth. And then Robin's right foot, Ryan Strong. I feel like he's been up there like multiple seasons. Um, so shout out to those guys. You guys are uh, good at FPL. Some of these names, some of these names have to be generated through ChatGPT. Like people aren't cla- like De Young and Restless. I think that that's phenomenal. Like somebody really came up. So with good. That. That's, good. So that's good. good. There's some good ones in here. Cooley balls deep. Isn't Tommy? Tommy's in the top like 20, isn't he? Is he? Tommy's good at that shit. Tommy's really good. I I screwed myself by not picking up Erling Holland early in the season, and I just got further yeah, and further it's behind. Just like you have to, and I can't. I could. I can't get. Oh, there he is. He's in 49th now. He fell a little bit. That's Tommy pretty good. 49, 49. Yeah, I mean that is pretty. There's like what 700 teams here. So well done, Tommy. Um, all right, let's do let's do stoppage time and uh, put a little bow on this episode. So first, we will start with best bets. Ivan Tony's mm. best bets. Shout out Mikey Fowler. Um, Mikey, you got like a Uruguayan seventh division. No, uh, stop. Over you. shut it. You want to throw it us? Shut it. Um, Napoli's plus money against Eintracht Frankfurt in the midweek, plus 120. Um, I think they're going to score a lot of goals in that game. Mulani scores for Frankfurt, so I like the over and I like uh Napoli to win that game, maybe like a 3 1, 3 2, 4 1, something like that. Big numbers, though. Um, and I really just love the uh, Dorman getting plus money to beat Chelsea as well. So uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the midweek here. Um, pretty much plus money on the money lines everywhere because everyone expects it to be very you know tense and kind of low scoring. So I think if you if you trust yourself, you fire on a lot of these draws like an Inter Porto or even a Dorman Chelsea or Benfica Bruges, and you could put some shit together. So um, my big one though is Dorman to beat Chelsea and Napoli to beat Frankfurt. Put those both together, you're doing all right. Okay. Uh, and one thing quickly, the these are the first legs in Champions League. So keep in mind, they often come out a little, you know, tentative, a little conservative. Very. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about over under in, in Champions League. Uh, Tyler, what do you got for us? Um, Mikey quite literally took parlay <laughs> out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. If we're, being, if we're being completely transparent here, I literally had uh, I had Napoli winning and Dortmund winning. Um, Fuck, that's so why don't we why don't we make it a real Tyler Terrence uh, parlay and add a third team in there so that you're the surefire going to lose. Um, so let's throw in um, over in the PSG Bayern game. Okay, I like it. I, I think it's three and a half. It's not two and a half. It's it's yeah, three and a half. Yeah. Okay. Right in there. All right. So that's, like a, it. that's a foul, that's a hyphenated last name, Fowler Terrence Parlay. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> I am gonna go. I like I like you guys uh bets. I'm gonna go with uh with the week. I'm gonna go with the weekend. I think Manchester United and Leicester City, I think both teams are gonna score, and I think there's gonna be a lot of goals. I'm going, you know, say over two and a half, both teams to score. I know that that's plus money, so that's my that's my lock of the week. Uh, that in Tottenham West Ham being a, just an absolutely atrocious game that nobody should watch along with Tottenham <laughs> Macy Milan. So two games in a row. Um, all right, go is time. Let's uh, let's wrap this up in style. Anybody want to volunteer to go first? Mikey. Uh, um, I need one second to just go and make sure I'm getting this thing hundred percent correct. Um, I could obviously give it to. I was thinking about giving it to Lord Panic because of uh, because of your your post, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I could give it to Ryan Malone. Could give it to my boy uh, yeah, for another boy. performance. Yeah, uh, fighting fighting his ass off with Hunter Rostock to keep them up. Um, hmm. Are they in no, Bundesliga I mean, two? Yeah, they're in the second. Uh, yeah, Bundesliga two. Um, I don't know. I I, I guess I'm going to give it to Ivan Tony. Uh, even though uh, he pissed me off with the antics late, but I think it was the best I've seen him play. And I think uh, I'm going to be boring about it this week, but um, for a guy that I should hate, I don't, and I don't quite understand why um, I've, I've, he's a bigger dude than I thought he was he's a better player. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it to Ivan Tony because he impressed me this week and I'm super, uh, super, yeah, I'm on board with rooting for him for a little while, especially because he's gambler. 
No, that's the best part. So he's he's the namesake of our of our entire be gambling episode. Okay. Yeah, but he Second. impressed me. One won me over. Okay. Uh Ivan Tony. Goa for Mikey. Tyler, you want to go or you want me to go? No, I'll go. Um so I already mentioned his name on the pod today, but uh, it's the chief executive from La Liga, uh, Javier Tebas. This guy continues to embody what it means to stand up for what you believe is right, as opposed to what you might believe is going to line your pocket. Um, and I think that probably in the face of a lot of scrutiny, a lot of bribes and a lot of other stuff that we might not ever even hear about, he continues to be the man who's standing at the front of the crusade to squash the Super League. Um when he really doesn't need to, I don't think, um, because I imagine that if it were to come to fruition, he would benefit from it, whatever that might look like. Um, so I tip my cap. He's a, he's a firecracker of a human being. He's like kind of a lunatic. And if you watch the documentary we talked about on Apple TV, you'll figure out exactly what I'm talking about. But um, for somebody to continue to do that, who's in a position where he doesn't need to, like Alexander Sheffrin, the, the president of UEFA has to do it, right? He is the president of the league that is competing with the super league javier tebas is simply just an executive of la liga and he has a dog in the fight but it's not nearly something where he has to stand this tall about it but i think he continues to fight for the soul of of football in this world um and i think that that needs to be um given its flowers here on sam's army podcast so that is my go okay i like it i've I've always I've I've always been interested to hear him, you know, sort of go back and forth with, you know, Florentino Perez and, and whoever the, you know, uh, Barcelona head honcho is at the time. But the I've always assumed this is me just being jaded, uh, but I've always assumed that he must have some self-interest in hating on the Super League as much as he does. I have no explanation for it. And maybe it doesn't. He, and maybe, he could. I don't I don't know what it is either if 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 it does exist. But I also just think that. Um, he he might just be a, be a good person and might just be doing this because he believes in what UEFA is doing and believes that um, if the Super League were to happen, it would be the death of football as we know it, um, which, who knows, could potentially not be the worst thing in the world, but certainly would be jarring and nobody really likes change and it takes some time to get used to it. So, yeah. For sure. For sure. I'm, I'm afraid of change. And, and this is one element of the Super League that we didn't get into, but it's interesting that the, fa and english clubs haven't said anything about it because ultimately i know this is about replacing champions league and you know europa league and europa conference league at the end of the day this is about rivaling the english premier league and that's that's what it is like the english premier league is on the way to being the super league and juventus real madrid barcelona they see the writing on the wall and they you know they see this as their way of at least getting some sort of stake in, you know, a, a league that could rival the English Premier League. I, I, I'm adamant on, on that. Anyway, my go is for the week. That was good. Both of your goes are good. Um, I'm going to give a couple of shout outs, honorable mentions. Lee Mason definitely deserves one. He deserves a statue, as I said, and uh, definitely a goa, good and bad. Um, from, from the Spurs fan in me, I just want to give him a hug and buy him beer the just sort of neutral soccer fan of me is just sort of embarrassed. <laughs> How do you not draw a goddamn line? You have like one job as Tyler said. Uh, also shout out to Pellegrino Matarazzo. This guy, he flies under the radar constantly. He's been, he's had some huge jobs. He's not, he just recently got hired as Hoffenheim's manager in the Bundesliga. He's a New Jersey guy. I mean, he's an American. I know that he's been off the radar. He hasn't really run in, you know, the sort of the brand name circles of of U.S. soccer, um, which I can respect because that's kind of always been where I've hung out um, in a much smaller capacity. But like the fact he's now going to be Hoffenheim's manager. And I think Hoffenheim has, I think, two Americans on the squad. Like they're sort of low key. Um, going to be a, a very uh, red, white, and blue team that we we should be paying attention to. Shout out to shout out in Pellegrino Matarazzo in uh, the Bundesliga. My actual goal I'm given to uh, staying in Bundesliga actually RBL's Willie Orbit. So he was identified as a match for a uh, uh, stem cell harvesting to basically save somebody's life. And he, you know, basically had to skip a game to go get it, you know, go get his uh, bone marrow uh, harvested and gave a stem cell transplant donation. 
and probably save somebody's life. And so good on good on him. He had to skip a game. I'm sure he's probably not. I know that that procedure is not exactly fun. So uh, not that I've done it, but like he's, you know, shout out to Willie Orbit for, um, you know, just being a being a hero. Being a hero. Well done at Willie Orban of uh, Red Bull Leipzig. So that's all we got this week, guys. Uh, Tyler, thank you for, you know, uh, making time for us. I know you you were busy today. Mikey, always great to see you. And uh, everybody else, thank you for listening. We are now going to throw it to a very fun conversation with Jordan Farr of San Antonio FC. Here we go. <laughs>